non-standard analysis and its offshoot, non-standard calculus, have been criticized by several authors, notably Eric Bishop, Paul Halmos, and Alan Connors. These criticisms are analyzed below. Introduction the evaluation of non-standard analysis in the literature has varied greatly. Paul Halmos described it as a technical special development in mathematical logic. Field medalist Terence Dow summed up the advantage of the hyperreal framework by noting that it allows one to rigorously manipulate things such as the set of all small numbers or to rigorously say things like, a to 1 is smaller than anything that involves a to 0, while greatly reducing epsilon management issues by automatically concealing many of the quantifiers in one's argument. Terence Dow, Structure and Randomness American Mathematical Society The nature of the criticisms is not directly related to the logical status of the results proved using non-standard analysis. In terms of conventional mathematical foundations in classical logic, such results are quite acceptable. Abraham Robinson's non-standard analysis does not need any axioms beyond the Mello-Frankel set theory, while its variant by Edward Nelson, known as IST, is similarly a conservative extension of ZFC. It provides an assurance that the newness of non-standard analysis is entirely as a strategy of proof, not in range of results. Further, model theoretic non-standard analysis, for example based on superstructures, which is now a commonly used approach, does not need any new set theoretic axioms beyond those of ZFC. Controversy has existed on issues of mathematical pedagogy. Also non-standard analysis has developed is not the only candidate to fulfill the aims of a theory of infinitesimals. Philip J. Davis wrote, in a book review of Left Back, A Century of Failed School Reforms by Diane Ravitch. There was the non-standard analysis movement for teaching elementary calculus. Its stock rose a bit before the movement collapsed from inner complexity and scant necessity. Non-standard calculus in the classroom has been analyzed in the study by K. Sullivan of schools in the Chicago area, as reflected in secondary literature at influence of non-standard analysis. Sullivan showed that students following the NSA course were better able to interpret the sense of the mathematical formalism of calculus than a control group following a standard syllabus. This was also noted by Artig, page 172, Chihara, and Dorban. Bishop's criticism, in the view of Eric Bishop, classical mathematics, which includes Robinson's approach to non-standard analysis, was non-constructive and therefore deficient in numerical meaning. Bishop was particularly concerned about the use of non-standard analysis in teaching as he discussed in his essay, Crisis in Mathematics. Specifically, after discussing Hilbert's formalist program he wrote, A more recent attempt at mathematics by formal finesse is non-standard analysis. I gather that it has met with some degree of success, whether at the expense of giving significantly less meaningful proofs I do not know. My interest in non-standard analysis is that attempts are being made to introduce it into calculus courses. It is difficult to believe that debasement of meaning could be carried so far. Cats and Cats note that a number of criticisms were voiced by the participating mathematicians and historians following Bishop's crisis talk at the AAAS workshop in 1974. However, not a word was said by the participants about Bishop's debasement of Robinson's theory. Cats and Cats point out that it recently came to light that Bishop in fact said not a word about Robinson's theory at the workshop, and only added his debasement remark at the galley proof stage of publication. This helps explain the absence of critical reactions at the workshop. Cats and Cats conclude that this raises issues of integrity on the part of Bishop whose published text does not report the fact that the debasement Comment was added at galley stage and therefore was not heard by the workshop participants, creating a spurious impression that they did not disagree with the comments. 
The fact that Bishop viewed the introduction of non-standard analysis in the classroom as a debasement of meaning was noted by J. Dorbin. The term was clarified by Bishop in his text Schizophrenia in Contemporary Mathematics, as follows. Brouwer's criticisms of classical mathematics were concerned with what I shall refer to as the debasement of meaning. Thus Bishop first applied the term debasement of meaning to classical mathematics as a whole, and later applied it to Robinson's infinitesimals in the classroom. In his Foundations of Constructive Analysis, Bishop wrote, Our program is simple to give numerical meaning to as much as possible of classical abstract analysis. Our motivation is the well-known scandal, exposed by Brouwer in great detail, that classical mathematics is deficient in numerical meaning. Bishop's Review Bishop reviewed the book Elementary Calculus, an infinitesimal approach by Keisler, which presented elementary calculus using the methods of non-standard analysis. Bishop was chosen by his advisor Paul Halmos to review the book. The review appeared in the Bulletin of the American Mathematical Society in 1977. This article is referred to by David O. Tall while discussing the use of non-standard analysis in education. Tall wrote, The use of the axiom of choice in the non-standard approach however, draws extreme criticism from those such as Bishop who insisted on explicit construction of concepts in the intuitionist tradition. Bishop's review supplied several quotations from Keisler's book, such as, In 1960, Robinson solved a 300-year-old problem by giving a precise treatment of infinitesimals. Robinson's achievement will probably rank as one of the major mathematical advances of the 20th century. And in discussing the real line we remarked that we have no way of knowing what a line in physical space is really like. It might be like the hyperreal line, the real line, or neither. However, in applications of the calculus, it is helpful to imagine a line in physical space as a hyperreal line. The review criticized Keisler's text for not providing evidence to support these statements, and for adopting an axiomatic approach when it was not clear to the students there was ever a system that satisfied the axioms. The review ended as follows. The technical complications introduced by Keisler's approach are of minor importance. The real damage lies in Keisler's obfuscation and devitalization of those wonderful ideas of standard calculus. No invocation of Newton and Leibniz is going to justify developing calculus using axioms v asterisk and v asterisk on the grounds that the usual definition of a limit is too complicated. And although it seems to be futile, I always tell my calculus students that mathematics is not esoteric. It is common sense. Definition of limit is common sense. And moreover it is central to the important practical problems of approximation and estimation. They do not believe me. In fact the idea makes them uncomfortable because it contradicts their previous experience. Now we have a calculus text that can be used to confirm their experience of mathematics as an esoteric and meaningless exercise in technique. Responses in his response in the notices, Keisler asked, Why did Paul Halmos, the bulletin book review editor, choose a constructivist as the reviewer? Comparing the use of the law of excluded middle to wine, Keisler likened Halmos' choice with choosing a teetotaler to sample wine. Bishop's book review was subsequently criticized in the same journal by Martin Davis, who wrote on p. 1008 of Davis. Keisler's book is an attempt to bring back the intuitively suggestive Leibnizian methods that dominated the teaching of calculus until comparatively recently, and which have never been discarded in parts of applied mathematics. A reader of Eret Bishop's review of Keisler's book would hardly imagine that this is what Keisler was trying to do, since the review discusses neither Keisler's objectives nor the extent to which his book realizes them. Davis added that Bishop stated his objections without informing his readers of the constructivist context in which this objection is presumably to be understood. Physicist Vadim Komkov wrote, Bishop is one of the foremost researchers favoring the constructive approach to mathematical analysis. 
It is hard for a constructivist to be sympathetic to theories replacing the real numbers by hyperreals. Whether or not non-standard analysis can be done constructively, Komkov perceived a foundational concern on Bishop's part. Philosopher of mathematics Jeffrey Hellman wrote, Some of Bishop's remarks suggest that his position belongs in the radical constructivist category. Historian of mathematics Joseph Dorburn analyzed Bishop's criticism in, after evoking the success of non-standard analysis at the most elementary level at which it could be introduced, namely, at which calculus is taught for the first time, Dorburn stated, there is also a deeper level of meaning at which non-standard analysis operates. Dorbin mentioned impressive applications in physics, especially quantum theory and thermodynamics, and in economics, where study of exchange economies has been particularly amenable to non-standard interpretation. At this deeper level of meaning, Dorbin concluded, Bishop's views can be questioned and shown to be as unfounded as his objections to non-standard analysis pedagogically. A number of authors have commented on the tone of Bishop's book review. Artigue described it as virulent, Dorbin as vitriolic, Davis and Hauser as hostile, Tall as extreme. Ian Stewart compared Halmos asking Bishop to review Keisler's book to inviting Margaret Thatcher to review Das Kapital. Cats and Cats point out that Bishop is criticizing apples for not being oranges. The critic and the criticized do not share a common foundational framework. They further note that Bishop's preoccupation with the extirpation of the law of excluded middle led him to criticize classical mathematics as a whole in as vitriolic a manner as his criticism of non-standard analysis. Based on personal conversations with Bishop, Hill recounted that Bishop's rejection of what he viewed as the fundamentalist nature of classical mathematics was closely related in Bishop's mind, with his rejection of what he viewed as his fundamentalist Protestant upbringing. G. Stolzenberg contended in a letter published in the notices that constructivists are capable of the rational-minded inquiry necessary to objectively review a textbook that is not constructive. Meanwhile, a recent study notes the vitriolic tone of Stolzenberg's own letter. Thus, his short letter contains five occurrences of the root dogma, culminating in a final spouting of dogma, whereas the root is absent from Keisler's own letter. Conchabar's criticism, in Brigida de Symmetrie Spontanee et Geometrie du Point of View Spectral, Journal of Geometry and Physics 23, 206-234, Alan Connors wrote, the answer given by non-standard analysis, namely a non-standard real, is equally disappointing. Every non-standard real canonically determines a non-measurable subset of the interval 0, 1, so that it is impossible to exhibit a single non-standard real number. The formalism that we propose will give a substantial and computable answer to this question. In his 1995 article, Non-Commutative Geometry in Reality, Connors develops a calculus of infinitesimals based on operators in Hilbert space. He proceeds to explain why the formalism of non-standard analysis is inadequate for his purposes. Conchabas points out the following three aspects of Robinson's hyperreals. A non-standard hyperreal cannot be exhibited. The practical use of such a notion is limited to computations in which the final result is independent of the exact value of the above infinitesimal. This is the way non-standard analysis and ultra products are used. The hyperreals are commutative. Cats and Cats analyze Connor's criticisms of non-standard analysis and challenge the specific claims and, with regard to, Conchabar's own infinitesimals similarly rely on non-constructive foundational material, such as the existence of a Dixmere trace. With regard to, Connors presents the independence of the choice of infinitesimal as a feature of his own theory. Can of AAL, analyze Connor's contention that non-standard numbers are chimerical. They note that the content of his criticism is that ultrafilters are chimerical, and point out that Connor's exploited ultrafilters in an essential manner in his earlier work in functional analysis. 
they analyze Connor's claim that the hyperreal theory is merely virtual. Conchabar's references to the work of Robert Solovey suggest that Connors means to criticize the hyperreals for allegedly not being definable. If so, Connor's claim concerning the hyperreals is demonstrably incorrect. Given the existence of a definable model of the hyperreals constructed by Vladimir Kanave and Saharan Scheller, Kanave al. also provide a chronological table of increasingly vitriolic epithets employed by Connors to denigrate NSA over the period between 1995 and 2007 starting with inadequate and disappointing and culminating with the end of the road for being explicit. Katz and Leitnam note that two-thirds of Connor's critique of Robinson's infinitesimal approach can be said to be incoherent, in the specific sense of not being coherent with what Connors writes about his own infinitesimal approach, Halmos remarks. Paul Halmos writes in Invariant Subspaces, American Mathematical Monthly 85, 182 to 183, as follows. The extension to polynomially compact operators was obtained by Bernstein and Robinson. They presented their result in the meta-mathematical language called non-standard analysis, but, as it was realized very soon, that was a matter of personal preference, not necessity. Halmos writes in as follows. The Bernstein-Robinson proof of the invariant subspace conjecture of Halmos uses non-standard models of higher-order predicate languages. And when Robinson sent me his reprint I really had to sweat to pinpoint and translate its mathematical insight. While commenting on the role of non-standard analysis in mathematics, Halmos writes, for some other mathematicians who are against it, it's an equally emotional issue. Hal Moss concludes his discussion of non-standard analysis as follows. It's a special tool, too special, and other tools can do everything it does. It's all a matter of taste. Cats and cats note that Hal Moss's anxiousness to evaluate Robinson's theory may have involved a conflict of interests. Hal Moss invested considerable emotional energy into his translation of the Bernstein-Robinson result. H. is blunt unflattering comments appear to retroactively justify his translationist attempt to deflect the impact of one of the first spectacular applications of Robinson's theory. Comments by Boss and Medvedev. Leibniz historian Henk Boss acknowledged that Robinson's hyperreals provide a preliminary explanation of why the calculus could develop on the insecure foundation of the acceptance of infinitely small and infinitely large quantities. F. Medvedev further points out that N. On standard analysis makes it possible to answer a delicate question bound up with earlier approaches to the history of classical analysis. If infinitely small and infinitely large magnitudes are regarded as inconsistent notions, how could they have served D as a basis for the construction of so magnificent an edifice of one of the most important mathematical disciplines?